Hello everyone, this is Heidi with Downtown NorCal Live and today joining me is Yelena Ivashenko, who is the owner of Bohem Hip Used Clothing in Downtown Davis. Welcome Yelena. Hi there, hi Heidi, thank you for having me today. Glad to have you. So um, a lot of folks haven't been into your store, can you just walk us through an overview of what you offer? I can actually even like walk you through it to show you, but um, basically it's a used clothing store. Uh, it's not like a traditional thrift store when we actually buy items right up front from people and we give them change either store credit or cash. So it's uh, different from a typical consignment store when you bring your items and you have to wait until your items get sold. We buy, buy items right up front and give you right at the spot cash or store credit. Um, uh, we accept all kinds of different clothing. It doesn't have to be like whatever is in fashion. Actually, me, myself, I love a lot of vintage items, anything unusual, costumes. Um, um, it could be, you know, high brands or it could be just a regular brands item. So just have a big variety of different things here. So under, um, under shelter in place, you are obviously locked, but you are still operating to some extent. Can you talk about your current operations? Sure. Um, yeah, storefront has been closed for a while, but it doesn't mean I'm on vacation. <laughs> I'm still doing a lot of things. Um, well, I've, I've been an artist, so I do a lot of handmade clothes to myself too. So um, sometimes items comes in and they're not perfect. So I do fix those items or I tie dye or I do uh, make recycled clothing too. So I take sweaters apart and make like arm warmers and leg warmers. Some of them have seen me at the Davis Art Center Christmas sales. I usually sell items there too. Um, so I've been doing a lot of tie dye. I call it tie dye madness, quarantine tie dye madness. Um, Recently, because of the mask uh, making, so I did have um, a little bit of wave of people requiring about uh, the bandanas, so we do sell them here too. So they're new, so not everything is used in the store. So I do buy like items like socks and jewelry, the bandanas, like little accessories. So I do buy them wholesale. So we do have quite few bandanas in stocks and I on our website I also show how to make um, masks out of the bandanas so um, and I basically take uh, um, uh, orders over the phone over a message from the Facebook Instagram we process all of the payments over the phone or PayPal or Venmo whatever is more convenient for people and I just deliver it to their doorsteps uh, what do you call it contactless delivery <laughs> yes. yeah mm -hmm. That's great to know that you're operating so efficiently, and I have actually been a recipient. You were you play, helped me play Easter Bunny last week, so <laughs> thank you for that. Um, you've also been engaged in some fun activities that you found in Australia, and, and since you carry some costume items, do you want to talk about that special sure. effort? I'm just, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to cheer myself up, and I have a really good friend. She lives in Australia, um, and she messaged me and she's like you need to join this movement and first I thought it was so funny but it's basically it's called isolation bin outings when uh, the only chance for people to dress up is when they take a trash out or go on a walk I think they're a little bit more regulated in Australia so that it's like there's not as much walks but they this is the only chance for them to dress up so people take videos of them dressing up they make it really fun and some people take it to like very good extreme so i'm trying to start this movement in davis so i pulled out my all of my halloween stash and every evening not just in the days when we do take the trash out even though we're we just did it yesterday uh anyway um so i dress up either my kids or myself and then we one costume at a time and we take a little videos and um, so I just encourage people to um, have fun in every moment you have. You know, it's such a great message because, I mean, it's so serious. But to have some levity like that, that's a great idea. We're going to do more of that in our house. Yes, <laughs> one of the, yeah, one of the businesses said like, oh, well, let's just have Thanksgiving. I don't remember one of the business local. Let's just have Thanksgiving dinner in April. 
<laughs> so what? So let's just have Halloween <laughs> in April or May. <laughs> For sure. So um, I know that one of the first things many of us did was we went to our closets and we cleaned them out. So are you getting a lot of requests to consign at this moment? Yeah, this is basically kind of like a Mary Conda cleaning. <laughs> it, it was last year when we had been bombarded completely, but I do get interested messages. They thinking that they can just uh, drop it off. Unfortunately, since the door is locked, um, I would just encourage people to hold on to those items. And um, once the door is open, we will definitely um, slowly transition into this because I wouldn't be able to accept all of this at once, especially we don't know when we're going to open. Yeah. I would also encourage people to donate if, if it's possible. Some, some of the items, if I, I'm not able to accept all of them, uh, please consider to donate it. Um, so we will find a use for those items because I've been contacted by many shelters and many organizations. I'm working with this one organization, Yola County Children's Alliance. I have a list of uh, needs that like they're helping homeless people. And I think they're working with the foster families uh, to dress them up because their stores are closed. So oh, that's, that's really nice that you're doing. Sorry, I just muted myself. Love technology. Anyway, um, I've felt that uh, from the beginning of this crisis, there would be, you know, lasting financial impacts. None of us know when that's how that's going to play out. But um, it does feel as if thrift will be more important uh, than ever before, or the consignment arrangements like what you're making. How do you feel about it? I feel more than ever people would be thinking of the way, first of all, to save money. Uh, and then realizing that they don't need as much um, and would consider to buy used clothing instead of um, the new items. And consumerism, I believe, will go down significantly. It just, it's awareness. And also, I think people understanding that Amazon will survive, Target will survive, but the local three stores and local boutiques will not. So they need to think of the outside of the box and start shopping in the smallish, smaller shops. And yeah. I did see a story last week that was concerning apparel sales are 50% down across the nation. So that's something. On a lighter note though, you and I attended a uh, Davis downtown marketing committee meeting this morning and you are proposing a beautiful art project. Do you mind going into that a little bit? Sure. Um, well, I stepped in um, when this shelter in place took place. I stepped in and become a, a member of the board of the directors. And I started thinking about the ways of, to help businesses and, but in the same time, bring the community together. So I, I have a special space in my heart for art. Um, I'm participating in the art about and being an artist and participating in different craft fairs. I just, I certainly believe that art unites people and brings it kind of all together. So it is a project, it hasn't been approved yet by the board of directors, but I, I think it's an amazing project that will um, unite the community. Basically, we are reaching out to communities, local communities, to art teachers, and anybody can participate and ask them to do a piece of art. It could be sculpture, it could be drawings, it could be paintings, but the message is how do you cope? with the shelter in place, with the quarantine, whatever you call it, with that situation we're dealing with right now. It could be, um, so it could be a drawing of like that you're biking, like for little kids. So the different age groups will be participating, I hope participating. So it could be a family project. It could be like brother, sister, and the mom, and it could be combined family project. It could be video, it could be a photographs of the chalk drawings. If you go through the town, you will see all these beautiful chalk drawings kids have been doing. So, so um, I'm hoping that will be sponsored by Davis Downtown Business Organization and we will collect the art. We will have um, uh, the committee that will decide on a on different category, the winners, uh, the future artists, and I'm hoping to create the art piece, uh, maybe a few different pieces to combine as a combined piece of art that will basically reflect what we're going through from different eyes. Like it would be a little kid, maybe from five-year-old drawing uh, with a professional art, it will be combined art and we will make a cards, postcards, stickers. Um, I was thinking about puzzles or anything that would be 
then inject back into the businesses. The businesses will get it for free and they would be able to sell it um, either online for now, uh, maybe when we open, it can just sell it at their stores. So, and it would be a representation of Davis, like what Davis represent during this time. It could be emotional, and I do get emotional <laughs> talking about it because some people it might not just draw a picture, maybe just express emotions. Some people, like with the paints, maybe it will be just emotion what you're experiencing right now. Yeah. So basically, it's a message through the community is that your art has power. Mm -hmm. I will definitely be checking checking in with you later as as that gets approved and gets moving. Um, mm -hmm. The last question I wanted to ask you is, what do you have to say to local leaders? Well, um, most of my customers, I would say 80% of my customers UC Davis students and, um, and I mean, and I'll, I would say for a lot of businesses in downtown, we do depend on those students uh, a lot. So I would, um, for the UC Davis leaders, I would just encourage to, um, bring those students as soon as, as possible and do consider because um, um, I know some university is trying to uh, close the doors all the way through the 2020th and the start session on 21st I would encourage uh, to think about the CD2 uh, in that respect and invite students and um, work with the city to um, to bring the students back uh, as for the local leaders, um, it is not the traditional time, so I would truly encourage the, to think, maybe think outside of the box um, and eliminate or maybe reduce the, what do we call it, red tape, just the, the little bureaucratic procedures or like if, you, if somebody's working on a project, just help them out and to avoid a little bit of delays in um, any programs. Yeah that would help uh, small businesses. Thank you so much, Elena. Um, I've been talking to Yelena Yevischenko, easy for me to say, <laughs> uh, the owner of Bohem Hip Used Clothing in downtown Davis. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah. And um, I do interviews Monday through Friday, one business a day, sometimes on Saturday. So please join me again tomorrow for another interview. Thanks again, Yelena. Thank you, Heidi. Bye-bye.